Hey, Flipped Physics, how you doing? This is Mr. Alley. We are jumping into lesson 4.7, the last lesson of chapter 4. And we are going back to analytical geometry and geometry in a Cartesian plane. And uh, we are going to be looking at how to use that to calculate slope and distance and work with triangles and prove them to be congruent um, on a Cartesian system. So here we are. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So the fact that the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other can be used to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle. So if you have the slope of one line and the slope of another line in the triangle and they meet and you're curious to know, is that a 90 degree angle? You could look at the slopes of the two lines that make up that intersection and determine that it is in fact a 90 degree angle if the slopes are a negative reciprocal of each other. Okay, um, so we'll look at a couple of examples of that. Also, the distance formula can be used to determine whether a triangle is scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So you can look at the distance between two points. If you determine that the triangle is in fact a right triangle, then you can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine uh, any missing leg lengths. Or of course, you can always use the distance formula for that purpose as well. So triangles on a Cartesian system is what we're, we're, we're working on here. And uh, let's show you some specific ways to do this. Here we have a triangle and we are curious, is this a right triangle? Is this a 90 degree angle? I can't really tell. Well, let's look. Let's find the slope and length of each side of the triangle and then we'll classify the triangle as specifically as we can. So these are my coordinates of my points. I can use the, uh, the distance formula to determine that, um, that the distance from A to B is, I'm sorry, this is not the distance, that's the slope formula. I can use the slope formula to determine that the slope of segment AB is negative three quarters, okay? And then I can use the slope formula to find that BC is in fact four thirds. So they are negative reciprocals of each other. Um, and here then the slope of AC is one seventh. And so AB and BC are perpendicular, so it is a right triangle. Um, and now I want to look at the distances here. And I can use the distance formula to find that the distance from A to B is 10. And the distance from B to C is 10. And the distance from A to C is 10 radical 2. So I've discovered that this is, in fact, a, a right isosceles triangle. Right isosceles triangle. Okay, two sides are congruent. All right. A mid-segment, this is something you haven't seen yet. A mid-segment is a segment, a line segment, that um, goes from the middle of one point of a triangle to the middle of another point of the triangle. I say point, middle of one side of a triangle to the middle of the other side of a triangle. And um, the mid-segment we'll discover has some interesting property. Let me show you how this works. Um, you find the midpoints of AC and BC. Uh, from example one, so here's the distances. We're going to use the midpoints, and we're going to discover the midpoint uh, of AC is point D, and the midpoint of BC is point E. We're going to put those on the uh, on the triangle, and we're going to draw a line to them. And what we've discovered is that um, these lines usually, not usually, always run parallel to the third side of the triangle. So let's look at this to make sure that it's actually parallel. Find the slope and the length of the mid-segment and compare them to the slope and the length of AB. So I have points D and points E, and I'm going to find out that the slope is negative 3 quarters. Remember that the slope for this line was also negative 3 quarters. The distance here is 5, and you'll remember that the distance for this was 10. So in fact, we, we now have discovered something interesting about mid-segments. Mid mid-segments are um, always parallel to and half the length of the side that they are uh, uh, that they yeah that they're parallel to the side that they don't intersect with of the triangle. There you go. That's the better way to say that. So the mid segment um, of this line is parallel to the the segment here, and the length is one half of the length. Okay, so that just demonstrated this mid-segment theorem. A mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the third side of the triangle and is half the length of the third side, always, all the time. So if you're working with triangles and you, uh, you see something like this, and if you can determine that these are bisected lines and that this is the midpoint of these segments, then you can determine that this is half the length and parallel to the third side of the triangle. Kind of a neat little tool to have in your bag. So now we can go back and use what we discovered about this triangle already, and we can determine the 
the length and slope of other mid segments pretty easily, right? Because we know that they're going to be half as long and they're going to be parallel too. So let's let's do some of this. The mid section, or sorry, the slope of FD, um, this part, this mid segment, is going to be four thirds because it's parallel to this, and the um, the distance from F to D is going to be half of the distance of BC. And remember, this was ten, so that's five. Um, the slope of FE, um, this segment here, is going to be parallel to the slope here, which was 1 7th. And the distance is going to be half of this. This was 10 radical 2. This is now 5 radical 2. All right. That's about all that we have for this section. It's pretty simple. Um, we'll go through several examples to tomorrow in class. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me then, or you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.